Well, this is Robin Green, and Robin is technically from Lubbock, ish. Ish. She's now lives in Papua New Guinea, and uh, she's one of our supported missionaries, and she's in town for a few weeks, and so we're really excited to have her here, and in the next five minutes or so, she's going to give us an update about what's going on in her life. And just so y'all know, Robin, for those of y'all that don't know her, she's a live oaker. She's like, I don't want to say born and bred, but she was here a long time. She was actually my 13-year-old small group leader when he was like in pre-K. So she has been around and then responded as a missionary to go to Papua New Guinea. So I'll stop talking. Go ahead. (laughs) I have been going to live oak for about 15 years and, um, Also 15 years ago, I started my career in education here in Lubbock, and about 15 years ago, I heard um, about people who had never had access to the gospel because nobody who spoke their language had ever heard the name of Christ. Um, There are places in this world that are not connected to social media. There are places in this world that are not even connected um, to other groups of people. There are little villages in rainforests on an island called Papua New Guinea. Um, They're north of Australia. It's tropical rainforest and it's um, mountainous. And so there are over 600 different people groups on Papua New Guinea who speak over 600 different languages. It's a task. When um, Christ gave the Great Commission to go to all the world, this is the ends of the world. Um, And I didn't know what that meant 15 years ago as far as my life. Um, I served with Live Oak a lot in Mexico. I led lots of mission projects. I was involved in missions a lot here. Um, I was continually burdened for these people who had no access to the gospel. Um, I also very quickly realized that I'm good at teaching science, I couldn't master Spanish. Um, And so I didn't think I was going into a language group to master the culture and language there. But um, about six years ago, I was able um, to move to Papua New Guinea, and God brought all those parts of my life together. Live Oak sent me, um, and I now work in a mission school that supports the missionaries that are out in the tribes in these 600 different tribes. Um, I teach their kids, and actually next year I'll be principal, um, so I'll discipline their kids. And I'm also the janitor and the counselor and (laughs) everything else. So yeah, yeah, it's a glamorous job, oh yeah. Um, And we don't have air conditioning and it's in the rainforest, so um, (laughs) it's fun times. But um, I love that all those pieces have come together, that I get to be here at Live Oak today, but that I'm going back to where I call home now, and I get to be a part of seeing these people groups that are very, very dead. They are spiritually dead. They um, are fearful. They, um, it's mostly spirit worship, so they live in fear all the time of what they're not doing to make the spirits happy. Um, and I get to be very close to seeing them switch to life to hearing the gospel and um, be being resurrected in that way. So um, I'm here in Lubbock just for a little bit, and I will um, be out in the foyer afterwards if you're interested in hearing more about Ethnos 360, which is the big organization that I'm about or with um, or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, right. so, Robin will be out in the foyer afterward if you'd like to visit with her. A couple things. One, she is a live oaker, like dyed in the wool kind of thing. So we love her. She's one of our own. And uh, so we do support her as a church uh, financially and in other ways. And we're really glad that you're here. Um, but you can hear more about her missions. And if you want to support her in, uh, in other ways, you can as well. Uh, So just visit with her about that. I'm sure she'd love to visit with you about that. And the other thing I would just say about, um, as I got to visit with Robin this week a little bit, is that she said it's, they have literally seen these villages where, you know, they don't even have a written language. They have a a verbal language. As she mentioned, changed from life, or changed from death to life. And uh, she said that now they have basically villagers going to other villages as missionaries. And these other villages are saying, what happened? And what happened was they encountered the God who was the resurrection and the life. And it is changing that. 
And so uh, I felt like her visit was timely in uh, regard to this message. And uh, so I would love for you to get to visit with her about that. The other thing I would say is not everyone is called to be a missionary in Papua New Guinea, but everyone is called to be a missionary. Right? We say our mission field is across the street, across the globe. Some of you may be called to be missionaries across the globe. But it's across the street, across the globe, and to the next generation. God's plan A is to use his people to reach unreached people. Because he's the resurrection and the life. He wants to give you new life, and he wants to use your new life to impact somebody else's.